Hello my friends, it is Amy Esther here with another video for you. Today we are talking about POTS. So let's talk about POTS, Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. I'm going to share with you the treatment that I have used to control my POTS and how I went from laying in bed all day every day to now being able to take care of my daughter, keep a clean house, um, exercise, get everything done that I need to. I feel so much better after um, taking this treatment plan. So I'm going to teach you what I do when I am feeling good and it's just kind of the day to day to keep myself feeling good as well as when I have a POTS flare which I have been having this week so this is really good timing. In fact right before I recorded this video I was laying down trying to recover a little bit so I could feel good enough to film this video. So I will teach you some of the things I did so that I could feel a little bit better today and hopefully feel even better tomorrow. So if you are watching this, I would assume you either have POTS, you know someone who has POTS, or maybe you just want to learn a little bit more about it. But if you don't know about POTS, I'm going to teach you just a little basics about what it is and then I will teach you some of the treatment. So POTS is a dysfunction of the autonomic nervous system, meaning the parts of the body we don't consciously control, such as your heart and your digestive system and things like that. Um, let's break down the word POTS. So first, postural. Think the, uh, your posture, how you are positioned, how your body is positioned. And we're going to come back to that in just a minute as we talk about orthostatic. POTS causes orthostatic intolerance. That means when a person with POTS stands, their blood is trapped at their feet. So most people, when they stand, gravity pulls your blood down, but their blood vessels constrict and it sends that blood back up to get all the places that it needs to go. And in POTS, your blood vessels don't constrict. You might have low blood volume. There's a lot of different reasons for it but your blood will pull at your feet. So I know for me, one of the first symptoms that I noticed with my POTS is that my feet would get really, really cold and they would turn purple. And I would talk to doctors about this and they acted like I was crazy for thinking that was a symptom. Um, and that was before I knew it was POTS. They acted like I was crazy thinking, oh, you're just cold, it's just cold in here that's normal for your feet to be that color, but now I know it definitely was not because my blood was pooling at my feet. And if you think about it, if your blood is not getting back up to all those vital organs, it can cause so many problems. So a lot of time with POTS, people have a lot of other chronic illnesses or chronic problems that are associated with POTS, and I definitely have a few. So if you want to learn more about those, make sure you subscribe or go watch some of my other videos because I talk all about the other problems that I have because of my POTS. Okay, next is tachycardia. Tachycardia is just an abnormal heart rate. So when a person stands with POTS and their blood is pulled at their feet, the brain sends messages to the heart saying, oh my gosh, all these places need our blood. We need to pump harder to get that blood up. So that is actually how they find out whether you have POTS or not. They do something called the tilt table test and they test your heart rate when you're lying down and then test it tilted back up. So for me, when I found out I had POTS, I tested myself. I laid down, my heart rate was totally normal, 70, um, 80 beats per minute. And then I stood up and my heart rate shot up to 150 beats per minute within a minute or two. So to be diagnosed with POTS, you need to have an increase in heart rate within, I think within 10 minutes of standing, and it should be over 30 beats per minute. So I was definitely past that mark. So that is breaking down what POTS is. Now let's talk about how we treat POTS. So first of all, it is an issue with your blood. So something that helps a lot is an increase in salt and an increase in water, and you need to do them together. I know before I found out I had POTS, I knew I was always really thirsty, and I always drank so much water, and I remember my husband would always tell me that I drank too much water, but I was thirsty all the time. 
but because everyone says don't drink too, or don't eat too much salt, I just wouldn't eat very much salt. And so my water was just going straight through me and it wasn't doing what it needed to do to get my blood pumping. So when you add the salt, that keeps your body holding onto that water. So you need both of them. And if you just have the salt without the water, it doesn't work either because it has the opposite effect. So lots of salt, lots of water. I use pink Himalayan salt and it works really good. I just put it on everything I eat and um, when I was pregnant, actually, I would check my blood pressure just to make sure I wasn't eating too much salt. But I have found that I just can't seem to eat too much salt. I eat a lot of salt. Okay, the second thing, if I'm looking down, it's because I have my notes right there. Um, the second thing is socks. So I wear compression socks every single day. And I wear uh, 30 to 40 mm HG. And... That just means how tight they are. So there's 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. 30 to 40 is the tightest. Usually you need a prescription for those, but I actually found a website where you don't. I got them from this, um, this is just the instruction manual, <laughs> um, but it's this Jobst, Jobst website. And this is where I found 30 to 40 without a prescription. I love the ones that show my toes, that don't cover my toes, because then my feet don't get so hot and sweaty since I'm wearing them all the time. I only take them off when I sleep and when I shower. And um, I guess if I go swimming, I don't really swim, but if I do, I wear them to the pool, I take them off, get in the pool, and as soon as I get out, I put them back on. These have made the biggest difference for me. Out of everything that I do, wearing compression socks is definitely the number one that makes me feel the best. I cannot live without my compression socks. I won't even brush my teeth without them. I have to have them on all the time. So they are expensive, but they are so, so worth it. So if you have pots and you're not wearing compression socks, please, please, please go buy some. I personally like the ones that go below my knee. I've tried the ones that go all the way up and they just always seem to fall down or they're uncomfortable, but the ones just that go to my knee are perfect. They seem to work really good for me. So the fourth thing is exercise. So you guys, I've known for a long time that exercise has made me better. If you follow my Instagram, you would have seen that when I thought um, that my POTS was just fibromyalgia. I knew that exercise would make me feel better, so I would exercise as much as I could. But sometimes it would make me feel worse. And that's the part that I never could quite understand. How come sometimes I go to the gym and I feel amazing and other times I feel awful or I go on a walk and sometimes I feel good and sometimes I don't. So I have found that working my muscles is the best thing. So if I would feel sick, I think, oh, I'll go exercise and I'll feel better. And I'd start exercising and I'd take it really slow. I would be on the elliptical, just barely moving. And by the end, I would feel so much worse because I wasn't getting my heart pumping. I wasn't getting my blood going to my muscles. So I have found that Cardio does not work as well, so I feel a little bit better if I do a short walk, but if I do too long, then it's just too much standing, and my blood is not pumping enough, and it just doesn't work for me. So I have found that every time I exercise, I have to do strength exercises. So I lift weights, I make sure I'm using my muscles, because after my workout is over, my muscles are still working, which means they are still pumping blood to my muscles and it just helps the blood flow through my whole body. So that helps so, so much. And um, number, what are we on, five? Number five is heat. I have found that being in the heat makes my pot so much worse. So you want to be cool and out being outside, getting sunburned. Think about this, you guys. What is a sunburn? It's it's red. Why is it red? Because the blood is being pulled to the surface of your skin. So when all your blood is being pulled there, it doesn't get to go where it needs to go. And it makes you exhausted if you have POTS. It makes you exhausted if you don't have POTS. Think about it. When you get a sunburn, everyone feels kind of crappy after. With POTS, I am out for days. I am so, so sick. So even if I go out with sunscreen, um, I still, by the end of the day, just feel exhausted. 
So I try to stay out of the sun as much as possible. Um, I also try not to take hot showers, so I will shower after I exercise so I can take a little bit cooler of a shower. Showers are the enemy of pots standing. You can't wear your compression socks and it's hot, so I take really fast showers. I've done that for a long time and I never understood why, but now I know why because it just makes me feel so awful. Okay, number, what are we on, six is diet. Okay, so my diet is typically paleo keto diet is the best for me. I used to be really, really strict and I wouldn't let myself eat anything off my diet. I tried so many diets. I also have a condition called SIBO, a small intestine bacterial overgrowth, which is super, super common with POTS. So if you have a lot of bloating and stomach pain and you have POTS, go get tested for SIBO because you probably have that too. Um, so anyways, I've done lots of diets for both POTS and SIBO and I've just found that a paleo keto type diet is the best. So I eat a lot of fat. I eat a lot of um, nuts and avocados and oils and I eat so many vegetables. It makes me feel so good to eat vegetables, but I have found that I've ha if I have too many carbs, so if I have only vegetables or I have popcorn or whatever it is, something that's too much carbs, then I feel really crappy. So I always try to pair it with a protein. So always make sure you have a protein with every meal. That will help you so much. If you have a big carby meal, like say a donut or a piece of bread or something that is a lot of carbs all at once, a bowl of pasta, I don't know. <laughs> if you have that all at once, that can take up to one third of your blood supply to digest that food. I heard that and that makes so much sense to me because if I have a lot of carbs, my body is shut down. It is so hard for me to get out of bed. I'm exhausted and now it makes sense because my body is shooting all of that blood into my digestive system to digest that food. So I would stay away from like grains and um, sugars, things like that because that will really wreak havoc on your health. Next, okay, number seven is sleep. You guys, sleep is so important and I am a new mom. I have a almost seven month old daughter right now and sleep is so, so hard for me because she is not sleeping and that has really caused havoc on my health. I am having a POTS flare this week because my daughter is just going through the sleep regression and I have not been getting the sleep that I need and that is really, really hard on my body. My body needs that sleep. Everyone needs sleep, but especially if you have POTS or another chronic illness, sleep is so important. One other tip with sleep is to sleep elevated. I found this out before I was even diagnosed with POTS. I felt like I was upside down if I would lay completely flat. So I get, um, actually it was a big body pillow and then I also have a wedge pillow that I use. And I keep my head elevated while I sleep. I'm not sure why that is with POTS, but um, something about your blood flow when you're sleeping, it's much better when you're elevated. And I also had read that in another um, another place that I learned about POTS. Actually, I will link it below because it's a great website called Dysanonymia International and they have conferences all over. I went to their one here in Salt Lake City, Utah. It was so good. I learned so, so much and I could connect with other POTS friends. It was really, really great. So let's just review the seven things that we talked about. So first we have salt, <laughs> water, exercise, heat, sleep, diet, and socks. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking down there a little bit because I forgot some, but make sure you have all of those things. When I am really, really sick, there's a few things that I do. I have this um, electrolyte. Um, it's just little electrolytes for rapid rehydration. I got it on Amazon, and they're not sponsoring this, but this works really well. I just pour it in a cup with um, this vitamin C drink and I will drink this once a day once every other day um, just when I'm feeling normal helps me a lot 
And this is actually the only supplement I really take. Um, I have not really found much success with any other supplement, but I really like the vitamin C. Um, but when I'm really, really sick and I'm having a really bad POTS flare, I'll put a little extra of this in, maybe have this twice a day, and it helps me so much. The other thing is just laying down. If um, I lay down for a little bit, let my blood flow, that's what I was doing today before I filmed this video, and I keep my feet elevated. So if I go to church or something where I'm there for a long time and I'm having a hard time um, sitting for that long, I will elevate my feet a little bit and that helps me so much. Um, and so keeping hydrated, I will always try to exercise and I will always try to move if I'm feeling really sick. Um, typically I'll lay down for an hour or so. If I'm still feeling sick, I do the opposite. I get up and move and I would say five out of six times that makes me feel a lot better. Every once in a while though, I do feel a lot worse when I exercise and get up and move. So I'll go back to laying down and then I will try to move again the next hour. But kind of going back and forth with that, exercising, laying down, that helps a lot. Um, and then doing all the things we talked about, having lots of salt, having lots of water, um, staying out of the heat, cool yourself down, all of those things will help a lot. Um, get some good sleep. I have found I feel worse if I nap. So getting just a long stretch of sleep helps me a lot. So that was a lot we were talking about today, but those are all the things that have helped me so much. I have gone from not getting out of bed, crawling to the bathroom, laying in bed all day long, quitting my job, to being a wonderful mom and a homemaker and keeping my house clean and getting the groceries done and dinner ready and going exercise, going on exercises, going on walks, hanging out with friends, making plans. You guys, I have found a way to do all of this by following these simple seven steps. This is one thing I am so grateful for with POTS is that it is just lifestyle changes. There are medications out there, but I really believe if you make these lifestyle changes that it will have a huge impact on your health. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. I make uh, lifestyle and mommy videos with chronic illness. So if you are interested in any of that, please, please, please subscribe. Go check out some of my other videos, learn a little bit more about me. And if you have POTS, please comment. Tell me what helps you the most. I'm really curious. For me, compression socks is number one on that list. If you have something that you have found that is even better, please let me know. I want to learn and find new things. And maybe you guys have some tips for me that I could learn and feel even better, which I could not even imagine because I already feel so good. This was a good long video. Thank you for joining me. I'm Amy Esther and I will see you on the next one.